Hey my loves, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. This week we have another hosting video. You have all been asking me to do more of these videos, so I decided each time we host, I will try to film the process. Let's jump straight in. The first thing I will be doing is laying out the linen and the serving plates. I always hide a riser or two under the tablecloth to make the tablescape look more attractive. Honestly, if you don't have a riser, just turn a dish or a baked tin upside down. No one will know. I'm giving it a little bit of a pleat so that I can keep the entire tablecloth on the countertop. This makes the risers less obvious but also more effective. Next comes the theme. I'm thinking nature. I definitely have spring in mind at this time of the year, but bearing in mind it's a somber occasion, I don't want anything too flashy. So I'm using this black and white foliage. Strangely though, I bought these mats to complement the napkins and not the other way around. Make sure you find a theme that works around your food and the quantity. And now comes my favorite part, the plates. When planning any get together, start with your menu. For high tea, you ideally want four to five dishes. You will have a main, a side, a minor, and dessert. So I have decided on one main, one side, one minor, and two desserts. My menu is basically five of my mom's favorite tea time snacks, so I'll be introducing many of you to our local delicacies. You should ideally plan this in advance. You will also need to know how much quantity you will be serving to make sure there's enough to go around with a little to spare. Both these, the menu and the quantity, will determine the plates that you are going to be using. Now this dish is for the main. I feel that when serving a main or the highlight, you want to set it apart. Using this wide rim dish is going to do just that. It can hold a lot, which means less refilling. I also like using bowl-shaped dishes as they keep food moist and warm as opposed to using a platter which will dry it out. Platters are better used for steamed and fried foods so as to avoid those from getting soft or sticky from the trapped heat. Every dish should make a statement if it is a stand alone. I'm using a riser under the platter to balance it with the top of this dish. And below that, I have this beautiful dish. I didn't just buy it or anything like that. It's something I have used often and I have enjoyed using. Since the side is gonna come with a lentil curry or sambar and some chutneys, all the condiments can be corralled together. It helps the guests to understand that all these options work together. Placing them together on its side also helps. Next to that is the minor. And that is going to be right here. Lastly, the desserts. I'm going to be using larger dishes today as there will be more guests. As you will notice, the flow of the food is from the main to filler and then desserts. I have my sweet dishes at this end to give it some additional variety of height. Two tiered bowls here for the desserts. I love this because it disassembles for easy storage. Once you have your dishes in place, continue creating the tablescape with a vase or two of flowers. All tables need this element for a touch of elegance. I'm going to go with white flowers and baby palm. Please don't use fresh plants. The soil might have an insect or two and I shudder to think of them crawling out onto the table. I also have another plant on the other side to create some balance. Cutlery is the next on my checklist. I'm basically going to hide the cutlery behind this foliage. I keep my extra cutlery separately, so I'm just adding more to my cutlery organizer. Stacked cutlery can make the space look very cluttered unless you have a much larger buffet table than I do, so I prefer just to hide it. But it is important that you can definitely see them when you get there. All buffets begin with the plates and end with the cutlery. Since I have spring in mind, I'm thinking bunnies. I have these little fellas that I use as tuckers. And I'm also going to add these trending napkin bunnies. These are all over TikTok and I thought I'd give it a go as well. It's easy enough to create and it looks really cute.
Now let's work on the tea station. I'm making use of this area behind the buffet for tea. Grab your cup, add sugar or not as needed. We are going to be doing chai and keeping the sugar separately. My Auntie G's don't really take sugar. Bunny theme means I can bring out my little sugar holder as well. It has held many things over time and today it's going to hold the sugar. It's absolutely gorgeous with the gold ears and polka dots. And of course we need spoons to add and to stir the sugar. Oops, it's a little too high. So I'm going to borrow this gift wrapping shredded tissue from B and add it to the bottom. This adds the needed height to the spoons. Plates. I got these dishes from IKEA. I have enough for 24 people. These are vitriol and I have mixed in a dozen Corel plates. I believe Corel is also vitriol, so they have a very similar look. For today, I only need 12 plates. On the dessert side, I'm adding some cake plates. So this is how it's going to work. They grab a plate and napkin, add the food, and when they get to this side, the dessert side, they have a choice of putting it in the same plate or they can grab a second plate for the dessert. Another item you want to remember to pull out in advance is your serving ladles and spoons. Have an appropriate size to how much you anticipate they will take. I'm using a pasta fork for the noodles. Using tongs would also be great, but I'm using my tongs for the other dishes. Now it's time to cook. Now I'm going to be making mee goreng. This is a local favourite any time of the day. Mi means noodle and goreng means fried, so it's just fried noodle. It's one of the most popular mama dishes in Malaysia. Mama food is admittedly not the healthiest, but it is super scrumptious. So Paul got me some fresh ingredients, which I believe are very important to good food. Usually, I would also add scrambled eggs to this, but today's meal is going to be completely vegetarian. Unlike the brunch, this time I had two weeks notice. So I got to plan it. One of the most important things to do is to delegate. I made a plan for the family and I posted it to our family WhatsApp group this morning so everyone is aware what is expected of them. Knowing who to ask for an update or when you need something, you need someone to do something, having a delegation plan makes it easier and less stressful. I'm going to take a break and get dressed and when I come back, we will plate the food. I'm starting with the main, the fried noodles. I'm garnishing this with fried shallots, green and red sliced chilies and chopped coriander. Next is the side dish, steamed idli, a South Indian specialty. These are the condiments, sambar, coconut and tomato chutney. This is a local Chinese favourite, it's called Popia. It's actually a fresher version of the famous spring roll. And these are Mithya Savanya, an Indian dish made with sugar and hand-fluted vermicelli. I usually cook this in the rice cooker, so it cooks while I carry on with other chores. It's light and almost like a sweet rice dish. And then I'm going to add these crispy mini jalebis and some shakar pare. These are both Indian, they're very sweet, very tasty and healthy, well, not quite. Earlier, I had mixed my punch. I recently got this dispenser as a gift and I thought I'd use it before putting it away. I'm using a combination of orange, mixed fruit and cranberry juice. Into that, I'm adding the ice. This seems to have melted into a block. Now I'm going to allow that to melt and dilute the punch. Fun fact, punch originates from the Hindi word panch, which means five. It's made with five ingredients and therefore it's always been called punch. I've also added some fruit slices to pretty it up. 
When I'm ready to serve, I add in the soda water or club soda so it remains fizzy. And let the party begin. On an average, a guest will start with one ladle of filtongs of the main. The second ladle is usually to pick out a few ingredients of their choice. For sandwiches, you need three to four little sandwiches. And for things like vadas and idlis, you will need one and a half to two pieces per person. For the minor, which is sort of a filler before moving on to the dessert, you want to have about two to three pieces in total if you have more than one. Towards the end of the party, I put out containers so everyone can take home anything that they fancy. I'm happy to pack some food for each family. I rather everyone has a second serving than me having to store leftovers. You want your guests to go home with a positive experience. Opening the doors to family and friends or entertaining is definitely one of the fun parts of stylish homemaking. For more info on stylish homemaking, you can refer to the description box below. I hope you have gotten plenty of ideas for hosting your next high tea. And for me, this evening was one of mixed feelings. Aaj ki sham, meri ami ke naam. Translated, it means an evening dedicated to my mother. I will be leaving you a lot more information in the description box below on how to plan a high tea. So don't forget to check that out. And until the next video, this is Ravina saying, happy homemaking.